Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772 7789 What's going on everyone? It's your man Kayla Laws, aka Senior Whopper, when you're too into the latest, the greatest, the dopest, the most phenomenal episode of society. Now, do me a quick favor. Go to Instagram. Go to Twitter. Go to Facebook. You can even go to Snapchat. Follow me. I prefer Instagram, though. At S-E-N-O-R-G-U-A-P-O-7-1-3. That's how you can get in contact with me. Send me a DM. Send me an email. Give me some likes, some thumbs up. Let us know. If you enjoy the content that we are providing, I tell you, I I am enjoying being on this show, but I tell you, I enjoy something else. I enjoy co-hosting with a phenomenal person who has my heart, my soul, my everything. And your last name. Hey, you do. What's up? Hey. 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 Yes, my name is Kira Laws, and you can follow me on Instagram at the modern day Cindy. That's Cindy with an I, not a Y. And I heard you say that you a snappy pappy. You said they can follow you on <laughs> On Snapchat. Snappy Pappy. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why I got to be the Pappy? I the Pappy. That's what he said. That's what uh, Brandon Max said on life, right? I the Pappy. You the Pappy. You said <laughs> on all social media platforms, that, including that Snappy Pappy. Snappy Pappy. That I don't even so really be on Snapchat no, you anymore. You know, for sure, for sure. But it's a, it's the new year, and we're looking forward to new things in 2019. We and are. so many things have happened since we last spoke. So let's jump right on into it. Let's do it. So there's a lot going on. Um, it's some of these stories are continuous, but let's start off on how we reflect on the holidays. Yeah. And a lot of people gave a lot of good information during the holidays. One of the things we heard was Lil Wayne. He went on a tour recently and he actually talked about how he was in a deep, dark place the past few years. Because it took him a minute to get off of his um, out of his con- the, people call it a slave contract it really was. Um, with Birdman, who he, had, he used to officially affectionately call his father. Um, but um, it took him about seven years or so to get out of that contract and before he was able to release his last album. Um, but during that time, he said, you know, he had true, real, real friends. And one of his real, real friends that hold, held him down, helped him, secretly helped him, was a secret Santa. And he that was Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. He said Jay-Z actually helped pay, well, Jay-Z paid his taxes, his outstanding taxes. And that's what's up. He also said the Swiss Beats. Um, said, I'm going to give him just sending you beats for free, man. I want you to just rap on all of them because they're just trying to help dude get back on his feet um, because he is um, – people really consider Lil Wayne to be a very strong lyricist. Yeah. What, what are you weighing on? Because I know you're a Lil Wayne fan. Yeah, I am. I am. You know, mixtape Weezy, during the, during the drought, in the, he had three mixtapes called The Drought, one, two, and three. Um, that's when he really began to showcase his prowess lyrically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, everybody know he could rap. He was he was the young cat in Cash Money back mm-hmm. in the late 90s. And, you know, I don't, I don't curse, but in his verse, man, F the world, you know, all this kind of deal. And, and so... Um, with the hot boys, but he was a coming age lyricist. He's we, we, he and I are the same age, thirty six years old. You know, I'm born in uh in September, and I, I really what I like about this story is that th- his contemporaries held him down. Absolutely, you know, and I think that there's something to be learned by that. And number two is, 
it's just a high high moment in the face of the people that say J and B don't be involved in stuff. Like they just don't broadcast their stuff. They paid this man. I mean, you know, paid this man's taxes. Obviously, they have the money, but they don't have to do that. And so, just the mutual respect, right? I think it, it's 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 a conversation that we we regardless of what industry, what, of what financial level, um, what what level of expertise and or influence that we have, hold the people down, um, hold the people down that you know that you can. Uh, let's let's show some goodwill. Let's show some some compassion, some love, some understanding for your fellow man, and just hold them down. I mean, I think it's really really important. And I and I and and, I, and uh, shout out to Jay and Sweet Swiss. Matter of fact, let's just start it off. Let's get, let's get them a one clap. You for sure. I mean, they deserve it. And also, when you think about it, like the, what what the holidays reflecting on the holidays and the things that people did during that time, um, a lot of people are talking about just just um, a lot. You know, at the end of the year, we saw a lot of. A lot of people that really t- took a lot of flack during this year actually rise to the top. For instance, Serena Williams, we remember early in the year last year, um, in 2018, people were talking about how she was throwing tantrums during the U.S. I think it was the U.S. Open or Wimbledon or something like that. Um, and they were talking about how, you know, she was um, unsportsmanlike. Well, at the end of last year, um, Associated Press named her the female athlete of the year. And, of course, I think that is well-deserved. She works hard. She works hard. And even in her defeat, she is gracious. And she definitely is an honest person. Mm-hmm. And she really does She really does um, wear that crown well. So I, I'm proud to say that, you know, she earned that. I agree, man. Um, how she handled coming back from a life-threatening and debilitating injury as well as a pregnancy. Um, and she came back and rose to the to the to the top of the world stage in tennis yet again at 36 years old, 36, 37 years old, when she's con- considered ancient athletically and is still competing at such a level with so much gra- uh, uh, grace, class and poise, as well as fearlessness to stand up in the face of some things that she felt like. Um, and, and I agree with her that that should not have happened regarding certain matches and, and, and the standard that she's been held against. I think it's phenomenal. I, I really do. I think it's phenomenal. I mean, this was a year. This was a a marquee year for women of color. I think in, in all uh, walks of life. Absolutely, and it's interesting. So, and so other things that have happened in entertainment and even sports. Um, <clears throat> we we noticed that in 2018, we saw the conversation still continued about you know taking a knee. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw the conversation expand a little bit um, when we had other athletes get into the get into the conversation where we saw the LeBrons um, and and different people from media telling them that they needed to sh- you know shut up and play. I mean, we just heard a lot of conversation about what the role was for entertainers and athletes, specifically black entertainers and athletes um, and of the people of color um, in, in, you know, sports and, in, in, um, and on a main stage. Well, right before the year ended, LeBron James had to go on record and apologize yeah. for rapping 21 Savage's lyrics from his um, album called Jewish Money, the lyrics. Um, also, right after that, 21 Savage himself had to apologize. Now, we know... Um, well, many people may not know this, but I know when I was coming up, that was that terminology about you know the term or the phrasing about Jews and Jews, and it was said just like that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful and money um, about them being good with money, um, but of course it takes a very negative um, spin because you are definitely stereotyping and p- classifying people as a certain way and it, it does have a negative connotation mm-hmm. in terms of how they spend their money or their yeah. lack of spending money so what do you think about the apology there i, I think it's warranted um for a number of different reasons number one as as a person of color we know what that what, what stigma is right we know what labels do to you um, LeBron has consistently defied those odds and those labels throughout his career. Uh, so many, regardless if you're an athlete or if you're a, a manager at Foot Locker, you know, oftentimes black folks are defying these labels. So I, I think it, it shows some cultural sensitivity. It shows that he's human. It shows that he's, uh, you know, he's paid his penance and he's sorry. But it also it also sheds a light on it because the whole you know the whole you know the jewish the jew having the jew lawyer or the jew accountant having the money all of that thing that's that's been espoused in hollywood and in songs for a number of years and it's high time 
that that something is said about it because it, it is in a negative light. It's you not know, that they're tight wads or you know, you know what I'm saying. Sure. Like all of these kind of deals. So in the apology, I, and I think it's even bigger for 21 Savage though, because you expect LeBron at this point to be a class act because he's always been a class act. Mm-hmm. 21 Savage is new in the game. He's only been around a couple of years. He's young, but for him to recognize, okay, you know what, I might need to chill. Or I need to I need to look at this. I think that's powerful. I, I never hold like if 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 you hold yourself accountable and you apologize and you mean it and, you, and, and you're sincere and it comes I, like I'm cool with it. Mm-hmm. I really am. That's good. I, I think, but but for him being a young cat, man, I think that's that's really good. And, and so we still see like a lot of turning on the tides because we are having to own it. I mean, we of course people talk about social media being that's your personal space, but as we have said time and time again, once you put something on the internet, it's no longer owned by you it's right and that and, and this, that even goes to your personal pictures yeah. like you have to be very careful about what you want to put out there and we we always have this conversation like you know once you put something out there you know it's out there you know so you have to be really mindful and thoughtful about what you want to share with the world when it comes to that public space you know there's something i would like to share with the world though i um, mean it needs to be public knowledge and public information and that is that this portion of the show is sponsored by houston housewives of finance did you know that only four states in the u.s Carry, I mean, offer financial education. 33% of more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they do not have enough savings. Please don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. You can contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at one 800 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary, again, that means free, personal and financial strategy uh, and workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. Get your coin together. Absolutely. For the new year. Absolutely. For the 99 and 2000. You heard me? <laughs> I had to throw that in there because it's important. And you, you don't appreciate that. If you don't have it, you heard me. You don't have you heard me. Listen, you don't appreciate that. Our producer is like twelve years old. She don't know what we talking 12. about. Twelve. She's a she's a a child prodigy. She's a she right. <laughs> <laughs> that graduated she, college. She got to college. This is a little Doogie House over here. Right. Do an open heart surgery. And she <laughs> nine years old. What's going on? That is understand. so funny. That is so funny. Just say okay. what up. We appreciate you. Listen, okay, so okay, <laughs> Mrs. Obama. Okay, so we know that Mrs. Obama's also she was breaking records toward the end of last year. She has come out with this book that people are raving about, calling "Becoming." Now she has was ended the year by being the most voted the most admired woman by Americans. And I think that's huge considering oh, the eight years that so she was in good. office, people really didn't know they how to take her. her. They yeah. were berating her. They talked about how she physically looked. They talked about, you know, her stand. You know, she doesn't represent a first lady because she wasn't traditional, but we always get that every few years. I mean, Jackie O was talked about as well when she was in office because she was definitely so far from what the traditional mm. first lady looked like. So, again, I'm really happy and proud to say that we ended the good uh, ended the year on a good note when it came to Mrs. O. She extended her book tour. Now she's coming to Houston and a bunch of other cities as March. well yep. um, in the new year. So I'm excited about that. Also, um, interesting to note, um, some other things happened toward the end of last year that is worth discussing. Let's talk about the NAACP. Now, toward the end of last year, NAACP had a conference called Hashtag Living While Black. And, of course, it was a um, a teleconference. It wasn't anything people could go to, but it was actually a teleconference. But I think it was an amazing idea because of all the things, especially in the past you know, a few years as, since. I'm gonna, really going to say maybe when we first started looking at when Trayvon Martin passed away and everything that has escalated since then as people of color in the United States. Um, some of the issues that we've had when it comes to encounters with law enforcement, when it comes to work situations, just the different things. But what does it mean living while black in the United States or anywhere um, right now? And so I think that was a real big step for the NAACP to do. I, I do. And, and, and I really and I'm hoping that Netflix or Hulu or HBO or some of these larger networks um, these content distributors and producers hope that the Jordan Peels and the Ava DuVernay's, you know what I mean? Like, I hope that they are watching this 
and, and create some content, some relevant conversations. We got Oprah, uh, Red Table Talk, somebody with a great platform, right, mm -hmm. um, to extend this conversation because it's so needed and necessary. Not just living while black, but living while brown, living while Latino, living while color. red, living living while Native American, right? Wait. Like. All of that, man. We we just started watching yeah, uh, Hassan, Hassan, Hassan Minaj, Minaj yeah. and he's actually one of the um, comedic commentators for The Daily Show. And we watched his stand-up the other night, and it was amazing because he, he highlighted the disparity in treatment, treatment of him as a person of color, him being a brown person Yeah, him being Indian, right. In, Indian, and he really made a point. It was like, this is, you know, toward the end of it, he said, this is what you know black people deal with all the time you know he was like it's almost like people of color feel like that's the price you have to pay to live yeah. in america to be de dealt with in a certain way that's negative versus right. just being a part of the country and you're actually born here yeah and he said i'm a born here i'm a, I'm a u.s citizen yeah he was born here to immigrant parents and yes, so it was just interesting yeah I, I think his stories like his and, and millions and millions and millions of people persons of color across this country need to you know, um, I would love to see, um, oh gosh, city chapters mm -hmm. do this. You know, on a certain day. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, sure. like from the MWACP and and just come together and create these town hall discussions and because it's it's necessary, man. Absolutely. It really is. And I think. I mean, like I said, I loved you know we being able to see different people of color talk about um, their experience yeah. here in the U.S. and we're talking about people of color who who <clears throat> are born here, not people of color who immigrated here mm -hmm. so the conversation is definitely um near and dear to us because we're not persons who are should be treated differently as yeah. citizens listen yeah i i, I ain't never been to africa <laughs> you know what i I'm have saying? i know I, but I'm what not, i'm saying, I'm saying is that, I, I get what you're saying yeah. i'm like and i have but i'm like i i totally am an american i'm an american like <laughs> I, I i love my african ancestry you know and i love digging into it and and, and trying to figure out where it is that my people come from but at the end of the day, I was born here, man, in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, March 18th, 1982. Dr. Dr. Thomas, right, on a Thursday, seven pounds, nine ounces, 21 and a half inches, man. Like, I was born here in these states. I have a Social Security number. I have a passport. I have a driver's license. Everything that you need. And so, you know, uh, having a conversation from that regard when all you know, um, when all you know is – is 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 being an American? Then it's 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 uh it's it's frustrating. And but but you know, uh, I tell you what's not frustrating. What's not? And it's having friends and family that support you all the time, oh, including wow. our Facebook Live folks. Listen, we want you guys to subscribe to our show on all the major platforms, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. And we ask that you review our show in iTunes with constructive feedback. And you can go ahead and share this Facebook Live post as well as the entire show with your family and friends and you can donate that's right you can donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week you can donate at www.thesphere.tv forward slash donate now listen closely for the month of december this month the next couple of days we we at this sphere have decided to help support the hunger thon initiative to help end um hunger in America and around the globe. Go to www.thesphere.tv forward slash hungerthon to donate today. We need your coin and hungerthon does too. You did. Yeah, but listen, we got to have these conversations about, about people of color. We do. It's, we it's, do. it's definitely important. And, and one of the things I, you know, I think it's interesting is that as a person of color, like I said, you know, the NWCP did a really, really great thing. And it, it shows that it's needed because just recently we read about a Marriott sales executive who um, said that he was working as, as a black exec at for Marriott Vacation Club. And he was pretty much ridiculed and berated um, during team meetings, called Buckwheat and asked to dance to Michael Jackson songs yeah, this, during meetings. Yeah, this incenses me. Um, part of the story that really like, makes it interesting is that he was like he was the only person of color working in his office and it seemed like everyone else had a cubicle and he was made to work in a what was it closet mm -hmm. a storage closet like a small storage closet it was he dark had a, and damp. a dark damp storage closet so he he's filing suit 
Um, part of the suit was talking about failure to provide him adequate work accommodations, harassment issues, you know, just just really injustices that we should not be dealing with in 2019. But this was 2018. So it's just interesting to see that this is still going on. Hence why that conference that conference was important. Absolutely. So so, you know, um, put on your lawyer hat for a second. Real sure, quick. for sure. And, and like you ever take it off. But. And kind of explain to people, you know, the difference between a civil and a, and a criminal suit because he, this is a civil suit he's in, right? Okay, so civil suits, typically when you're in a civil suit, you're suing, you're suing usually for monetary damages. Criminal suits is mean you broke a law and your the criminal punishment is usually a fine plus jail time, right? right? Or jail time plus a fine, right? It, it can be either or, but usually it's, the jail time is overarching. Um, when it comes to... Uh, civil suits, you're really looking for monetary damages. You're saying, I need to be made whole from what happened. Now, generally, usually you can't be made whole, right? It's hard to make someone whole just by paying them unless it's a loss of a product. Like if it's, you know, you part a product and exploded or something, it just didn't work, right. it was faulty. Yes, you can get paid for that. But when you talk about like mental, emotional um, things that he's talking yeah, about here, um, there is a, there's a, penalty for it but they also you have to start looking at punitive damages you have to think about the weight of changing someone's actions to make sure they don't do it again or to deter other companies from doing it as well so this this should be a situation where i'm sure he's not the only person that's been in a situation like this working for an organization but because the need for a job is so important he he stayed there as long as he could and then wound up leaving mm. he, he had to leave on doctor's orders yeah. as well from, anxi- from, from anxiety, from, yeah, which is which is, a, which is a diagnosable disorder, yeah, that really affects millions, so he can work. millions of people around this. So country. it's almost like he was forced out. Yeah. So it wasn't that they fired him; he was kind of forced out based upon their actions. Yeah, based upon the, the, the their alleged act- right. yeah, alleged, alleged irreprehensible treatment. Good so job, alleged a- alleged Very actions. Um, I, when I have no to say that integrity, because because this is all allegation, but it is. but he does have documentation so it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how if we hear any more about it um in courts and cases mm-hmm. um see if it pops up in any of my classes yeah on my um or my reading materials yeah, right. for, for um, your but, ethical but, assignments and stuff right like any that, ethical yeah. assignment but again this is something we have to we have to do better people we just have to do better and i i am a person who i've worked in a lot of um organizations where i may have been one of a few persons of color and there is a a feeling of a microscope even if you're working with genuinely really great people you do always feel like you have to represent for a whole yeah, yeah. Uh, race of people and you're looked at as a representative of a whole race of people and it is it is a little bit draining and yeah, tiring it is because it, it really, everybody really doesn't is. like michael jackson because everybody person of color doesn't even like for him you know it's just a lot to that mm. it's a lot but let's move right along. Let's move on. In other news, there are a group of people saying like, hey, this is so funny to me. So we know this is the year that people are really r- rallying up to get ready for election time, 2020 elections, right? And yeah, campaigning starts in January. Yeah. They, like well, real, well, if real. you're smart, you're going to start campaigning in January. Some people are not going to start getting out there until mid-year. But if you're smart, you're really going to start going in in January, really getting your staff together and things like that. A lot of people, people we follow, Sean King, and a lot of persons are talking about, hey, we're watching. We're trying to figure out who you start picking to be a part of your, your, your you know, the person that you're working with, who you hire. Um, but there's also another conversation that says that, Black voters will reject any person who's running as a 2020 Democratic candidate who trans trashes our, our B- President Barack Obama to appease the far left. So what they're really saying is you cannot use him um, negatively to get votes. You can't say anything negative about him to get votes because we know um, he was not the cause and or issue in a lot of the issues that we're seeing in America right now. I, I, I you know, it's it's frustrating to me that we have to even have this conversation. Right. Um, I understand it from a tactical standpoint, right? Um, because you're trying to, the far left can't stand the Obamas. It is what it is. Um, and the far left only represent a small, small part uh, of 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 liberals, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, I, I just it, it's very, very frustrating, or the far right, rather, forgive me, or the far right, uh, um, it, it's, it's very, very frustrating that we even have to have this conversation. But but rest assured, you know, um, I stand by it because there's no need for it, and it has nothing to do 
with uh, running in 2020. Like there's a there's even a code amongst amongst um, former former uh, uh, presidents that they don't talk bad about the current president mm-hmm. while they're campaigning. They don't do it. There's a now you know what I mean within the first like hundred days or something like that. There's a code. There's a code, and so I think that if they can be civil enough to to do that, man, you know, candidates should do the same thing. Absolutely, and I mean this is interesting because we're. I, I think that this just lets you know the climate that we're in that we have to have these conversations. Because again, this goes back to race, and this goes back to be you know being um, black in America or living while black in America. Um, unfortunately, you know, these are the conversations we have to have because there is a base that prides itself off of the race divisiveness. Mm-hmm. And so we have to have conversations about not being divisive um, because th- this is what we're living in right now. So we have to go back to what was life like before the divisive campaigns that were so overt happened. And, and, and it might have been covert before, but they're yeah. overt now. And it's frustrating because... You know, I've seen polls that say as much as 90% of the country doesn't agree with the far left or the far right. That's why they're the far left. They're the outliers in the far right, but they just scream the loudest. Right. You see what I'm saying? And then uh, it's so it's interesting, man, that that we have to be uh, a part of the process in, in a way to where we are drowning out their perfunctory noise. Absolutely. Now, what, what makes me kind of let's do a little pivot here. Let's do it. So prior to the year ending, we heard about the young man in New Jersey who was a wrestler um, and he had dreadlocks. And of course, we've had conversations before about dreads, braids and the hair of men and women of color. Uh, We heard about the Supreme Court case um, that came down this year that ruled in favor of an employer that they said they did not have to hire or offer employment to someone who was not wearing their hair in a natural state i.e. dreads and or braids, um, which was really challenging for me even to digest because I'm like, as a person of color, um, when I wear my hair in braids as a woman of color, I'm doing it for style and functionality, not to be um, distracting or um, and or trying to go against any uh, norm. It's just that we have different hair issues and grades as people of color. We un- Unlike any other race, our hair actually has as a race has different textures Mm -hmm. no black person has the same texture hair it's just not it's just not the same it's just not um it's because we are a blend of a lot of different things and so when i first saw this clip um in december you you were were in tears i was definitely in tears because i was like to see somebody cut something off that that's a part of them Mm -hmm. you know like i know the process it takes to um grow your hair and you know get it a certain way and and really feel feel proud of what you're doing and from my understanding this young man actually had wrestled with his hair like this before um and reading more about the case later on and hearing the conversation about it well he was told that he could wrestle with his hair wrap then was told he couldn't wrestle with his hair wrap then it was told that um when the, the the ref ref did not come early came late to, to examine his hair and then was like well you just need to cut it off you can't you can't wrestle at all and you know um and again to know he did it before he wrestled before like this it it's a, to me it's a clear case of some form of type of discrimination where um you're judging someone on their ability to do something based upon how they look even though they ask for the same thing they had in the past which was a cover mm-hmm. um so it would not be an issue uh it just you know i think as a whole, when you wrap it all together, we we just face uh, a lot of discriminatory practice that other people just don't deal with. We do. And it's really, really unfortunate. But you know what makes me smile, though, is What's that I know that justice is coming. The justice is coming. And it also makes me smile to know that this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. So, at Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We're committed to the finest possible oral oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and a friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they're a part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Chandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. Again, the number is 713-789-8680. Elite Dental Wellness. Listen, 
I'm glad you're smiling about a leap into wellness. Well, this, I'm smiling about this justice. Because issue, this issue with Andrew Johnson, man, and that's the, that's the young brother in New Jersey. That's his name, the young wrestler. It's, it frustrates me what I was telling you when we, when we first talked about this. And, you know, I said it on my radio show as well. Um, the system failed him. Yeah. Not just this ref, but the system failed him, right? Because um, there should have been clear-cut understandable guidelines and rules um or he should have been checked at in the early stages of early stages at of the season you know what i'm saying yeah. if, for this to be happen for this to happen because there is there, there uh, is a policy on the books um in new jersey at that federation um when the league rather not federation with the league saying that the hair had to be a certain way it literally it, but if it was not enforced why is he being punished at the grand stage you, you understand what i'm saying if it wasn't enforced equitably at the same rate the same way all the way through the season now like that's what the system has failed him and it has failed so many other uh, young young boys, they wrestle. Well, I think so. I, I thought it was good that the, the district in which he does belong, the school district, said that they will not uh, participate in any sports that this referee is as is participating in. Um, I think that it's interesting that again we have to go through these extremes to uh, to get some form of equitable moves. Of course, I, my understanding that the ref has been sat down. But he it's, it's deeper than that since the, he did shown that he has a history of using uh, racial slurs. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's just, you know, it's a lot. We have to consider this person as a young man. We have to consider his mental and emotional state. We have to consider what that does to you as you're put through that in front of people. Um, I'm glad that we live in an age where people were able to record it and capture it because you capture the emotion of that moment. Mm-hmm. But as you capture a young man, although he won, it was like, I said, I have to do this just to prove, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it, it's that call that proving, constantly proving. I have to go through so many changes just to be accepted yeah. for something that, that sucks, man. to be accepted. That's, that's why these conversations of living while black are so powerful. Yeah, it's it's the living while black conversation. And I'm sorry, I, I, I would encourage if anybody from the NAACP is listening that you all continue having these conversations, not just annually, but maybe a uh, quarterly, monthly yeah. Um, this needs to be something that, again, like you said, other networks need to get in on too, and get some people that are actually living while black, not just commentators who may be far removed from it or people. We need to have people that are dealing with stuff so maybe we can get a con- connection to those who are actually in a position to make change that necessarily don't look like us. Right. It's a conversation, right? Indeed it is. Okay. Also, it's interesting. We kind of make another little pivot um, to something that's equally challenging is um, we talked about, I think they, we, well, let's talk about this. What happened with Instagram as the year closed last mm-hmm. year? Um, I thought it was a good thing. People didn't think it was a good thing, but I actually liked the Instagram update that went awry, awry and people was really pissed about it. So apparently people woke up one morning and Instagram decided that they were going to change their formatting completely. And they went from the regular, you scroll down your timeline to see what's going on to the horizontal swipe. I like the horizontal swipe. Now you tell me, Snappy Pappy over there, that that's something that Snapchat was doing. Yes, yeah, right. I mean, Snapchat started started the horizontal swipe and then Instagram took it. So that's stories. When they did the stories. Right. I, I think that... People are, when it comes to social media, we're used to our social media being a certain way. And, and generally speaking, rollouts happen with announcements and they happen with updates. With updates. And, they, and people and they, deal and they, with updates better. Exactly. And they happen, you know what's going to happen. You're like, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, we just woke up. And folks were like, "Wait a minute, my my, my Instagram is is messed up," and, but, and people take that seriously. But this is the thing. What this is, this is what I didn't I'm saying. get to experience it because by the time I, I realized it was it. messed up, it was they they had already taken it. Well, back I down. had it while you when you experienced it. It I still was, was on my phone. No, no, I was still on my phone when we yeah. talked about it this morning. But right. I I was like, this is no different than an Instagram. This is no different than an update, an Apple update, right? And it probably should have rolled out with an Apple update, like so people wouldn't complain so much. And I'm like, but. Y'all, to me, if y'all gave it a second, y'all would have realized it actually had a little bit more. It was functionality, it, functionality yeah. than what everybody was complaining about because you could freeze the frame, scroll the comments. You know, people. You know, it was just a lot. People just don't. Yeah, I think it's just an it's just an example of people not 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 
don't like forced changed or or unannounced changed. Well, it's always unannounced because when Apple does technically when Apple does an update, that sucker's unannounced. You yeah. never know when it's coming, and you never you technically really don't know what's about to get changed. Until you don't, you, but but you know something's coming because your phone starts screwing up. You but people some people so, don't pay attention like that. I think people do. At this, uh, we we at the what we at ten at ten s now. We at the tenth generation of the iPhone. I think people know. Okay, my phone is acting stupid. But, I got an I got an update coming. But it, but this thing. Why but you don't know what's going to happen. But oh, well, you don't know what's going to happen. So you, so you okay with the Apple update that changes almost everything yeah. on your phone? But you're not okay with the IG update, which gives you an update that actually makes sense. People, but you, in your mind, you have convinced people, yourself because when we got the stories, we just got this. Them suckers just dropped in. Yeah, but we were used to that technology because it was with the, it was with another app. This is what I'm saying. So, but every, I, but everybody wasn't snappy because I wasn't no, snappy. No, everybody wasn't snappy, but people knew what it was. And so I just I I think that you know as con, you know consumerology one on one people just are not used to instant change like that as it relates to things they that they subscribe They better get used to, to it because let me tell you something. Like, this world like, is changing. It, not even just instant. That's the that's the wrong word. Unannounced. Okay. Unannounced. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. And before that reason, I'm going to say we need to learn how to get more changes and we need to, we need to accept more changes. And for that reason, we're going to remind you that this portion of the show is sponsored by The Sphere. Hey, we'll change hey. the game for you. Hey, are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our rich content with... Coupled with your inspiring dialogue, with st- strategic ads surely hit the mark every time. Call today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at thesphere.tv. Again, the number is 832-772-7789 or email us at advertise at thesphere.tv. Now, let me say this to you all. Let's talk to the people. I want y'all to appreciate Next time, stop complaining so much about some of the people that are giving you all the upgrade your life and let it ride. Because people didn't like it, man. It, I don't think they didn't like it. I think they didn't like what you just said. They didn't like the unannounced. But again, most of the changes we get on our phones are unannounced. They just didn't like it happening all of a sudden. It was trending on Twitter, and folks were like, "I don't like it. I can't stand it." But I'm, but, it's I, again, in, but it happened in the middle it. of the, it happened in the middle of the night. So that means y'all woke up with an attitude because it wasn't well, a, it wasn't worldwide. a regular update. It was worldwide. It was the middle of the night for us, and, you know. For the people in Europe and all oh, that the kind of thing. It wasn't the middle of the night for them. Whatever. Okay, so I, I don't I don't I don't even know what to say. I don't I don't even know what to say. Okay, but let's talk about this real quick before we peace out on these boys. Okay, listen. Have you heard about Walmart and their new technology? Talk to me. Okay, Walmart has a new technology that they secured a patent to eavesdrop on the persons that the employees and also the shoppers. This patent is going to allow them to hear what the, the people are talking about and hear what they're doing. Meaning they can hear if they're trying to steal. They're going to hear what if you know the conversations between the tellers, the employees, and the and the shoppers. So they're going to be able to monitor everything. They have not yet put it into practice or play yet, but they have secured the patent. The patent has been approved to eavesdrop. So the patent may be approved. Just because the patent is approved doesn't mean necessarily that it's legal. So, well, no, it would be legal. So because cause this is the thing about eavesdropping, just like on like wiretapping. Right. When you, as long as the one of the people on the phone knows that it's in use. Right. That's all that no, matters. Right. But what I'm saying is, yeah, okay. I mean, that's true. That's true. It's, I, a, I it's no different. It's no different yeah. than having a a video camera. Well, and and that's what and, and that's my thing. They are. I don't know. I don't know if they're audio equipped, but there are already cameras at, at dozens of different but establishments. You can't hear. All, right. That's why I don't know if they're audio equipped. Um, uh, when it comes to CCTV yeah. and stuff like that, so it's nothing new. I, I think that I, I honestly think. Listen, it's it's for security. Um, people, are, you know, folks crazy out here. People robbing tellers and and stealing money from the till and and trying to do stupid stuff and. You know, you know, you never know what you might, uh, what you might unfold. Uh, I wonder what the research was to require them to do this. I would love to be a fly on that while in the boardroom with, with the Walton family to figure well, out mean, why it is they say they want to go this route. Because I'm I mean, sure, you know, it, it, something sparked it, but I don't have a problem with it. I think it was as long nece- as you're honest, whatever. I think it was, a, it was a necessary evil as they grow and as they continue to change, um, because you have to. 
you know, you have to keep up with the technology. You have to keep up with what's happening. And at the pace that Walmart, like we just talked about yesterday, Walmart is trying to track with Amazon right now. Yeah. Um, that means you're you're pulling you're putting more product in store. You're putting more product online. You, you know, you want to hear what people are saying about the products. You want to hear the conversations that people are, you know, having with the employees to the, you know, to the shoppers and vice versa. You want to make sure that the people are happy. You want to get feedback. I think they felt like let's figure out if this is going to help us close any issues we're having with margins and make sure that we're, you know, reducing shrink and things like that. So, I mean, it, I can see how it could be used. I would just advise those who have sticky fingers to make sure you keep your pocket, your hands in your own pockets and don't take nothing that belongs yeah, to Walmart because they're going to have you on, on camera and on video. I, I, and, I mean, and, on um, and, just, and just to avoid any, any kind of anything, just put a sign up on every register. You are being recorded. It's that simple. It's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you know you're being recorded, people still gonna be stupid. It, you know, it is what it is. But um, I don't, again, I don't have a problem with it because I, I don't steal. Well, that's <laughs> you, important. You see what I'm saying? Like, and I just, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Well, I appreciate that. Now let's let's wrap up with this. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, Sesame Street did something amazing. And they rolled out the new character who happens to be homeless to get people more sensitive to what's happening in form of um, people who don't have as much as others. They wanted to make sure that they give kids a conversation, how to have conversations with maybe even their their fellow um, classmates who may not be going home to a house and maybe going home to a shelter. I think it was very um, uh cutting edge for Sesame Street to do something like this. I think it was a very thoughtful and considerate considering where we are in our economy right now. Her name is Lily and she's the first puppet to experience homelessness. And, and I, I am here for all of it. Yes. We cannot hide the human experience from our children. Mm -hmm. um, they see it every day, especially if they live in an inner city. Mm -hmm. They go into inner city schools. They have classmates. Who, who may have who may are have been experiencing these things? We know of, of a successful fashion designer here in Houston, who recently, who until four years ago was sleeping on park oh, benches. Listen. You know what I mean? Like like it's like you're that rem you're only this far removed from that unfortunate reality. Yeah. And I think it is an amazing idea. It's hella responsible and it's it's phenomenal. That Sesame Street has done that. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. I, I think it, I think it was it a needs great needs to be thing. discussed. It was definitely a great thing for them to do. I'm really appreciative for them doing that. Like I said, it opens up the conversation. It helps your kid have healthy conversations about what's happening in front of them. In the world, and, yeah. And, and helps them not to not join. I guess it helps them be equipped to not be so uncomfortable that wind up having conversations that turn into bullying. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, it, 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 it opens up the door for compassion. Yeah. I, you listen, I, I, I know it can, in quite honestly, it can be irritating sometimes when you see someone, a peddler or a panhandler, mm -hmm. you know, but no one chooses right. to be there. Yeah. And even if they do choose to be there, I believe that there's still something mentally wrong with them. So yeah. there is an issue regardless. Right. For sure. right? There's an issue. If they choose to, to beg on the corner, then there's, there's some, they have a diminished m mental capacity. If they are begging on the corner, then they have a diminished capacity to earn. So something is wrong. We have to approach the situation with oftentimes uh, with compassion. And this is a phenomenal way to, to get out in front of it. Like you said, it's very responsible for Sesame Street. I want to one clap Sesame Street for it. Once again, they are they are ahead of the curve by hitting a lot of diff difficult conversations and issues. I'm really I'm really proud of that. Yeah, no, I real talk. I really love that. I really, love really proud that. Of that. It's really great, especially going into like I said, where we are in our economy right now. Mm -hmm. But with that being with said, with that being said, I, I enjoyed this first year, first show of the year with you. I did as well. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Kira Laws. You can follow me on Instagram at the Modern Day Cindy. That's Cindy with the I, not a Y. And go ahead and click, click, tap it and tap, search, search. I don't even know what that means. S E N O R G U A P O seven one three. That's how you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Kaylin Laws. You tuned into the very first episode of Society Now in 2019. Yeah. We'll see you next time. See you next time.